my building, the Chaperone, this 1884 stern wheel steamer. Before I give you kind of a, a top to bottom, stem to cern view of the ship, there's some things I want to mention and make you aware of. First of all, you have to decide, is this a, a beginner ship or an advanced ship? And it's really somewhere in the middle. The reason I would encourage this for a beginner is that there's not a lot of planking. Planking is kind of an art form. And this is simple when it comes to planking. Secondly, there's not a lot of rope work. So it gives you some experience in doing the rigging, but it's not so extensive as a tall ship would be. So it gives you some of that experience. It also gives you the ability to make it a little bit your own. I've done that. I made some changes. When I do the top to bottom, I'll go through some of the things that in hindsight, I would have added or done a little bit differently. Early on in this build, I encouraged you to go to modelexpoonline.com, scroll to the bottom of their page and enter your email address. I want to emphasize that again, because you will get one email a day, usually, and it's whatever their current promotions are. They offer some fantastic deals from time to time. On another topic, I regularly check to see if there's any posts or comments or questions on any of the videos that I made. This morning when I woke up, I had a comment from Roger Wade, I think it's 141, and he has the ship and he's going to build it and he was so appreciative. And then he blew me away because he contributed to my building ships. And it really brightens a person's day. Do I need it financially? Not necessarily, but every penny that, that I earn through the videos and through Super Thanks actually goes to either my next project or a piece of equipment or something like that. So from my heart, Roger, thank you very much for that. I'm excited to have you build a ship and uh, follow along on my build. It's such a rewarding hobby, not financially, but it is rewarding um, mentally, keeping your mind sharp and physically forcing you to use those fine motor skills, especially if you're, you're older like I am. I just turned 72 recently and this gives purpose to life, not only the building of the ship, it's making these videos and creating them and sharing them with you. So thank you to all my super fans and thank you for all of you that just watch the channel as I build this ship and the next ones in the future. With that being said, let me do some close-ups of the ship. In the video series, I didn't cover that much on actually doing the rigging work. If you look at the plans closely, you can see where they tie off. So you need to find the point where the rope ends and begins, and it's hard to see here. So uh, just if you look on the plans, and I'm very impressed with the plans. Like I had mentioned, I actually framed some of them because I think they are works of art unto themselves. I really didn't have any problems in this area to speak of. Some of the extra things that I did, I made these little lantern covers here. All these things on the deck, it doesn't come with supplies to put on the deck. So those were added by me. Same thing with this little park bench. And that's what I like about this particular model. You can add some things as you go. One thing that I mentioned just briefly, the kit comes with a small staircase that will go to this level. I made this circular one and put those little posts in, but again, that's just me making it mine. One thing that I might have done differently that I think would be pretty neat is with these lanterns, had I realized in advance, I could have run a very small wire up the back outside the smokestack and actually lit lanterns had you know similar to what's here on the deck and have these lit and not use these metal ones that came with the ship although i do like that look i mean it, it does look very nice but it's not consistent with my uh, rest of the lanterns that are actually lit the area that i really wish i had looked into more was i'll call it the pilot house up here on top and i should have put a great big um, ship's captain's wheel or whatever you want to call it, the steering wheel in essence, and some other things inside this. I've got it glued on now. I can't do it. I did put a little furnace in there, if you remember, 
because it just has this top smokestack with nothing under it. And I don't think you can see in there, but there is a little furnace in there. If I had to do it over again, I'd put some little logs in there with it. Maybe I'd be the only one that would know that it was there, but I would still like to have done that if I had it to do it over again. You might notice I put different names on here. I do have a laser cutting machine. And because the ship's going to be displayed in Port Royal, I put the Port Royal uh, sign on there. And Port Royal is very close to Hilton Head. And so I put Hilton Head on the front one. Port Royal on the two sides. I still have the ones that came with the ship that say Chaperone. They can be put right on top of that if I ever want to uh, go with the Chaperone uh, name nameplate. You can see I have left everything brass partially. I like the look. My wife really liked the look, so I'm going to leave it brass for now. I can always come back and paint that white. That's what the, the kit shows. Early on, you may remember the ladder and how I didn't get it to match up right, but I just made a little uh, walkway that attaches to the base of the ladder, so that worked out well. This brass, I did age some because I didn't think that should be shiny brass by any means. You can see under the skylight, you can see some of the internal lights that I have. It's almost impossible to see where I spent all that time and putting in the two grand pianos and all the furniture. This is an area that I think if I had it to do over again, you could very easily just cut out and leave a section Maybe not on this side of the ship, maybe on the other side. Leave this side because of the ladder. It has a lot more appointments. So leave this as is. And on the opposite side, leave a section open. You can see this is all dark up here. I probably should have added some lights to be consistent. Up in the, I think it's this called the Texas. So that's something I would do different. I did have to make my own American flag. The kit does not have a flag. You probably can't see, but it actually does have roping that goes up. I don't know if I can get the angle so you can see, but the flag is actually on a rope. And then I just put some, made the, made the flag on a color printer and two-sided glued it together and looks pretty good. You all remember my disaster on cracking this deck and I covered it with basically butcher block, butcher block paper, and that worked out amazing. It covered any of the cracks. I also liked it because there was a seam and it covered the, the, the uh, puzzle looking seam that was in that, on that deck. Coming back up front, as you know, I did plank all my decks myself. So I planked over what the ship came with. You can buy planking, just go online either Amazon, Model Shipways, uh, eBay, and pick out some planking if you want to do that. I encourage you if you're a beginner to go ahead and, and maybe do that so you get the experience of planking on those two lower levels. It wasn't too difficult to do. One little hint that had I realized, I could have taken a little section of this and used it to measure, to make sure these little post tops went up high enough. Or you can take them higher and then just cut them off. I think that would work fine too. I'm rethinking the lifeboats. I have them in place, but they would look pretty good if I had painted them white on the bottom. I'm gonna leave them the, uh, the stained wood, but maybe white would be a, a good way to go. I didn't use the rope that came with the ship. Now I did use this white that was from the ship, but for the rest, I just, I used black and some of the areas I used a little thicker. Again, remember I used the black rope here instead of cardstock. And I do like how that came out. Here at the rear of the ship, very, very happy with the paddle wheel assembly. And using those clear straws as spacers, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm glad I, I stumbled upon that idea myself. So I was very happy with that, but it looks very nice at the back of the ship. This will be the opposite side of the ship where it does not show the ladder. And this is the area that I thought I could have left a section out here. 
and left it open so you could see in where the grand pianos and all that furniture is. And you could expand that a lot further than what I did. I was, I contemplated putting some chairs and things out in this area. And then I, I decided to let it, let it rest. I'm trying to show underneath where the boiler is. And I may have put the whistle down there. I'm looking down there and I think I, I may see the ship's whistle that I thought was some heating or some of the ductwork or something for the boiler down below. So that may solve the mystery of what happened to my whistle that I somehow misplaced. So there's a lot of work that you do that you, you may be the only one that ever knows it's there. It's like all the cargo that I put in the, the lowest level. It's very difficult to see. But someday, you know, someone may get a little flashlight and work their way and see all the, the things that I put inside. I know they're there. So it gives me something to talk about with the ship. As you know, I'm thrilled with the work I do with copper and then aging the copper for certain items, especially those smokestacks. Here's the ship's bell on the on what I would call a, a sawhorse, actually. I would have put some more bells in the uh, in this top piece here, maybe you know strung across so you could see them there. Just a lot you could do with this particular model. It is fully inclusive. I had more than enough materials. I'll show you what I have uh, left over here in just a second. Let's talk about something else that I would do different or wish I had done differently. In the very beginning, I would carefully go through the list of equipment that comes with the ship. And most importantly, I would go through and identify every dowel, every different size of strips of wood, I would mark those and set them aside. They were hard to determine which was which. I had plenty. Uh, you'll need maybe a, um, a specific measuring device. And these are in fractions. Uh, I would prefer millimeters or centimeters or something, but I was able to, to do it. I'm, you know, I made a couple minor errors, I think, but I survived through it, but it would have been smarter for me to list these out, have a special designated place where they're all lined up so that I know that I was getting the right pieces. Do not discard this two page parts list. You'll need it. You also need to make sure that you read the manual. It's, there's not a lot of pages here. It's not a lot of reading. I mean, it may look like it right now, but there are hints every once in a while that the, the original builder of the ship, the engineering person that put this ship together on how to do certain things. And it's not a step-by-step, -step, it's just somewhat of a guide. The step-by-step -step is visual with those, I call them blueprints, but with the ship's plans that are, are very large. But make sure that you keep reading off and on Go back through it as you get to certain stages before you start putting it together. I have these few brass pieces left. These two things, I'm not, not sure what they were. I'm going to keep researching and see if I can find it. I think these are extras. This uh, is part of a railing. So I may find where it goes on the ship. I haven't really taken the time to look into that yet, really. And then I'm very pleased I have, here's some of the planking that's left over a few pieces. Same thing here, some of the pre-stained. Uh, these were, I marked them the 16th by 1 8 There's three or four of those remaining. I have some, uh, again, I don't have it marked what the size is. But the thing that was nice is that I didn't have to worry about messing something up. These are the real thin, uh, they are uh, rectangular or squares. These were the, the 
little pieces that go up the wall that I painted maroon. So uh, there were extras of those. As you can see, there's, there's uh, enough extras. If you make a mistake, you should be okay. I think these are leftover ladder pieces probably uh, because I made that circular staircase. And here's the chaperones that can go on the uh, pilot house if I ever want to do that. So I will keep those. The kit actually came with the holders for the lifeboats. I had already made my own, but I, I just missed that. So if I've been paying attention, I could have used those instead. I may or may not have dowel rods left from this. I, Because I have a lot of dowels, I may have mixed up some of mine with these. But dowels, you can come up pretty easily. These are 1 16th by 3 30 seconds. Again, it's nice to have extra supplies with the model. So I will keep these. You never know when you might need something in a future build. All things considered, my box looks pretty clean. This officially closes the build on the Chaperone Stern Wheel Steamer from 1884. A very rewarding and fun build that took, I think it's gonna end up taking about four months to complete. So that's not too long a period of time. A lot of the ships I build take me a year. A total of 14 episodes. The length of the ship, 34 and a half inches. So it will take some space wherever you're going to display it. This brings us to the end of my building the chaperone. I'm proud of the ship. And in reality, if you would like to see it in person, this ship is going to be on display at a artist shop in Port Royal, South Carolina. She displays local artists work and she's agreed to display mine for a period of time. So if you're in that area, stop by, tell Mrs. B Boiler Dan sent you in and check out some of the, uh, the model ships that I have on display there. This is Boiler Dan 1 and as always, thanks for watching.